What's up everybody, it's Carl's Collects Comics and I'm back with part three of my Comic Collecting for Beginners video series. This time I'm going to be talking to you about how to add value to your comic collection. Can't wait to get started, so stay tuned. Alright, so here we are for part three of my Comic Collecting for Beginners video series. This time I'm going to be talking to you about how to add value to your collection. Four steps, as always, um, that are going to help us focus in on this particular subject. Now, step number one, diving right into it, is recognize that value has different meanings. When we start talking about the value of a collection, um, we have to start by recognizing that the word value has different meanings. Um, our first thought, obviously we jump to monetary value. Um, you know, but when it comes to collectibles, this is actually secondary. And I want to make that case for you right now. Um, the reason that collectibles have a monetary value placed upon them by collectors is not because of the intrinsic value of the piece um, of that piece. These items, you know, they're, they're not commodities. They don't have a built-in monetary value. Um, that's only, it's only determined by what someone is willing to pay for them. Um, it's the same thing as art, you know, like a, a painting. Um, the value is wholly dependent upon the buyer and the buyer's market. You know, yes, these books are scarce. Comic books can be scarce. Art pieces can be scarce. Um, and yes, more than one person does want them but they still don't have a specific fixed value. Um, that's why a lot of people say, um, buy what you like so you won't ever be disappointed. Um, because you're ultimately setting the price for the item that you're purchasing. You know, it's not intrinsically worth what the market is willing to pay for it. Um, you're the market, so you are setting uh, the price when you're willing to buy the particular comic for whatever the price it is that's offered at. And value doesn't just come uh, from the arbitrary price tag or what the book is going for. Um, it comes from collectors who assign the value based on the maximum amount of money um, that they're willing to pay for that particular comic book. Um, so the first step in adding, in, you know, to add value to your comic collection is defining what you value. Now, I wanted to use a practical example, you know, when I talked about this so that I could help us kind of separate those two worlds. Um, because, you know, I know some will argue the point on these, but I want to try to make it very clear what I'm speaking about. All right. So this copy of Uncanny X-Men, number, number 277, right? You know, it's a near mint comic. Uh, it's one of my favorite X-Men covers of all time. Um, so this is in large part because of nostalgia. You know, as a teenager, I remember picking this book up and, and the cover striking me so uh, deeply, um, not just because it was a Jim Lee cover, and Jim Lee is one of my all-time favorite comic artists. It was because I was excited and, and my mind was blown to see Wolverine and Gambit fighting each other um, you know, th these, are, these are like the team rebels for the X-Men, but they weren't fighting each other in their standard uniforms because most of the time in the comics we wouldn't see Wolverine. We, well, actually to this point we would never see Wolverine in the X-Men color uh, uh, suit and the same for Gambit. We didn't ever see these guys wearing the standard X-Men suit because, you know, they were the rebels. They always had their own outfit that they wore. Um, everybody else might be matching, but they wouldn't be. Um, the 14-year-old me loved this cover, everything about it. You know, now, that's the nostalgia side of it. But are there big comic gains to be made by, you know, in, on this book? No, I mean, not really. There's nothing of real key significance to it. Um, you know, it's, it's maybe a $10 book, you know, in very high grade. Um, and, you know, it, yes, it's Jim Lee on the X-Men, 
Um, and yes, this particular copy is autographed by Jim Lee. You know, I, I got a chance to meet him, and and I, I could only get four books signed, and this was one of the books that I chose, not because of the dollar value of the book, but because of the nostalgia factor for this book. Um, you know, it's it's not really going to hold a lot of value to most collectors, but it holds a lot to me personally. Um, because of the nostalgia factor and my good memories, the warm fuzzies I get, I get now when I even now when I pick up, pick it up, and look at the cover and just appreciate the artwork, and then open the book and flip f flip through it uh, to read it. Um, it's it's purely nostalgia. Um, so I place value on certain comics because of how they make me feel not just what the what the market says that they're worth you know so I, I call this heart value and you know this uh, you know it warms the heart makes you feel good and warm and fuzzy about the particular book um, so this is one way that I value you know that that we place value on a collection is the nostalgia factor to it you know but my entire collection isn't just built on nostalgia though you know, step two in adding value to your comic collection is to accept the reality of the market. Um, you know, so as we covered in my previous video, uh, I mentioned to you that um, you have to respect your investment because um, when we get into comic collecting, it's going to take time and money away from other areas of our life. Like every minute that I spend here making a video for my comic book channel or up here you know reading a comic book like this is a minute that I'm taking away from maybe time, uh, uh, spending time with my wife or spending time with my son or hanging out you know even just playing with the dog you know because I, you know, I love the dog she's a great dog um, so it, by res you know we have to remember that earlier thing that I shared that we have to respect the investment that we're making into the hobby um, you know, and, and that's not a bad thing, it's just a fact that we have to acknowledge. Um, so, you know, part of this means accepting the reality of the current collectible comic book market. Um, that these books become investments as well as collectibles uh, once you're spending in excess of like $50 for a specific book. Um, you know, I've got, you know, this copy of uh, Special Marvel Edition number 15. Right. Okay. Just as an example, um, this book has a specific monetary value to it within the market um, because it's the first appearance of Shang Chi. And at the time that this video was recorded, um, the first movie did well, and the sequel has been announced. And I, I personally really enjoyed the first uh, Shang Chi movie. I enjoyed the dynamic between him and the father. I wish they hadn't killed off uh, his father. Um, when Wu, uh, also known as, or, or at some point was known as the Mandarin, but, um, you know, it, it is what it is, but I really liked it so much that I said I want to go get a copy of his first appearance, and so I have it. It's a lower grade copy, but it's still a copy, and for me, well, I'll, I'll hold them side by side real quick for you. So for me, this is the heart knowledge, the, um, where the value of the collection is in how it makes me feel versus this, while I also enjoy this comic, this is what I call head no based on head knowledge because I know that this book is going to continue to appreciate and value because it is the first appearance of a major Marvel superhero. So there's a difference in how you, um, you know, that's tied to accepting the reality of the market um, you know, as you build your collection, you want to accept the reality of the mark, the reality of the market by focusing your dollars. Um, you know, here's the part where everyone you know may or may not agree, but that's okay. You know, accepting the reality of the market means slightly adjusting your purchasing habits. That's why I put that step three is to diversify your comic collection, and that's exactly what I was talking about here. Um, this is a this these two books specifically are examples of how I've chosen to diversify my collection over the years. 
like I said, this is heart knowledge. You know, th this is a heart purchase, heart knowledge, because it's nostalgia. I love it. But in the comic book, in the greater comic book market, the only value, monetary value, that's on this uh, book is because of the signature of Jim Lee on it and the condition of the book. It's very high grade. This, while I also equally enjoy it, is a newer discovery and this is part of the head knowledge knowing that this book is going to appreciate so I'm going to go ahead and put the cash into this book knowing that it will appreciate later on in the future. Um, and this is, you know, I've done, I've started this diversifying of my comic collection uh, with books like that. And those are just two very small examples of it. Um, and this is a step that, look, this is a step that takes um, forethought and strategy. You have to kind of sit down and really analyze and think. This is not just going into the comic, your, your local comic shop and just buying whatever's on the wall. This is saying, you know, sitting down and thinking, um, if you follow me on Instagram or, or if you've seen the video here, you know that for 2022, which is when this video was recorded, um, I set up certain goals for myself. I said there are 17 comic collecting goals for 2022 that I want to hit. And it's meant saying no, already saying no to some big books and some cool books because I want to be able to say yes to certain other books. <clears throat> um, I'm going to use this example for diversifying a comic collection. And don't, you know, don't at me on this one um, because I really do, I also like variants. But I know some of you love variants. For those who are brand new, the beginners that are watching this video, um, a variant is not the thing that you, you started hearing about in the multiverse, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. A variant simply means a variant comic book cover. There is, when a comic book is released, there's what's called the cover A, and that's the basic uh, first print cover A, um, the, the cover artwork for that particular issue of that comic. Now, um, variants will also be released sometimes where um, the variant is a, it's by a special artist or it has a special theme or it's something different than the regular A cover. And the variant, you know, th there are, I think, for some, for some major releases, there's been up to, I think there was like 150 or 160 variants for certain titles. Some, like for the recently released Stray Dogs, Dog Days, there were 75 plus variant covers released for each issue of that two issue series. Um, that's a lot of books. And the inside is completely the same. It's just the cover. And I, I love variants. You know, I'll pick them up if I really like the art. Um, and they don't cost too much money. Uh, but in many cases, if you truly want to add value to your collection, you know, it may be wiser to slightly limit the number of variants uh, that you buy and instead add a more pedigreed book with a stable dollar value. Um, I know, you know, and I'm not saying don't buy variants or that variant cover editions are bad. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that, you know, the purpose of this video is to give you four steps to add value to your comic collection. If that's your goal, if you say, I want to add value to my comic collection, and you say, I'm going to accept the reality of the comic book market, and you say, I'm going to diversify my collection, then part of what that means is refocusing your dollars. And, and it's small things. It really is small things. It's not big changes that you're making to your purchasing habits. You can still get the stuff that you really like. It just means that um, maybe instead of picking up seven ratio variants uh, for, or, or even seven variant covers for the month, scale it back to just four or five. And, you know, then take that extra money and either bank it and save it to save up for a bigger book that you want to add to your collection, or you can... Um, put that extra money into a minor character's first appearance. Um, something that, you know, you know, somebody that you enjoy, but is something that's going to, you know, that, that 
is a little bit more stable in value than say um, you know the you know cover F of whatever the latest issue of something is killing the children is you know and sometimes these variant covers go for they go for thirty forty fifty dollars and you know I'll, I'll tell you that there's there's some books that you can get for for that amount that are really great books you know they're really cool books to have it's 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 not super expensive to to buy some of these books um, like this yeah this Mr. Miracle first appearance of Mr. Miracle um, was I think it was 50 bucks and I mean I get there was another book added to it, another Kirby classic that was thrown in to the lot but you know this is the price of some variants but that's classic good uh, Bronze Age, Bronze Age uh, DC right there, and I love Mr. Miracle. I think he's great. I think he's a cool character. I've always been intrigued by him. I just didn't have a copy of his first appearance. So, um, you know, I, yeah, you know, and, and so by doing that, by focus, by refocusing your dollars, um, you know, it allows you to create a diverse comic collection that is going to encompass all the things that you like about comic books. Um, you know, but it's going to hold value and then add value over time. You know, most comics, especially first appearances for heroes, are going to appreciate over time. They're going to grow in value um, as long as you don't buy at the peak time. Um, you know, now I would never say don't buy that book. But I would say don't buy that book right now. Um, you know, if a book you really want is very high in price at the moment, maybe focus somewhere else, wait for the book's price to settle back down, um, and then this builds diversity into your comic collection and ensures that you won't take a loss on the monetary value uh, of whatever the current hot book is in the hobby at that moment. And that leads, that dovetails perfectly into step four, which is simply buy the dip. This is one of the easiest, quickest ways to add value to your comic collection. You know, it's a stock market term and it's adapted adapted for the comic collecting hobby and it simply means that if you're going to purchase uh, books for your comic collection, don't give in to FOMO, which is fear of missing out. Um, this is the sensation that you get when you see a certain uh, book being touted by all the comic book YouTubers, um, by all the apps, uh, the websites, the blogs, um, other collectors as being the hot book of the week. You know, the top ten hot books of the week. We've all seen those videos. We've all seen those lists. The truth of the matter is, the book is still going to be there after it's off the hot ten list. It is. Not everything in the hobby has to be about making comic gains. Making financial gains off of it. There's a very small percentage of people that are good at being flippers and dealers. And the large, vast majority of comic collectors, you know, we're collectors. We're not dealers. Let the dealers be dealers. We just look for the best possible deal and buy the dip because we're savvy collectors. You know, and you know, if you're buying a book for a substantial amount of money, uh, really anything over $50 is a good amount, uh, make sure to purchase for less than the peak price. Well, how do you know? Um, by doing your research. If you watch enough videos, read enough blogs, and pay attention in the Facebook comment collecting groups, um, you're going to have an idea for how much certain books are selling for. Uh, if you don't start to have an instinctive feel, reach out. Uh, several, several experienced collectors don't mind having a conversation, uh, a messaging conversation about um, thoughts on certain books and the best time to buy in. Um, you know, in just the past, in just the past few months, as the channel, as my channel's grown, um, I've had people reach out on Instagram, um, and you know, I don't, I don't mind chatting about comics for a few minutes, you know, for a couple minutes, and just saying, you know, hey, the, you know, if if somebody said, somebody was asking me about. Um, a certain book and, and where the best place to look, best place to look at buying that book was, and I said, well, yeah, you know, th these are some dealers that you can trust. Um, these are uh, some, you know, places you can look, and 
I think this is the price to, to aim for if this is the grade that you're going for. And um, all that's part of what makes the hobby great. That's what part of what makes the hobby fun. Um, you know, I have zero recommend. I have zero problem making those recommendations for some of the people um, that I buy from. You know, um, and even pointing you towards resources to use for uh, comic prices. And you know, here's a quick hint, just to save you some time. eBay sold listings. If you're brand new to the hobby, um, the best place that you can go uh, when you're searching for a certain comic is to go into the eBay app app or eBay website, uh, enter into the search bar the, you know, the title of the comic book, the issue, number, and maybe, you know, something else specific about the comic book, and um, then set the filters to only show sold and completed items. And you'll see, sure enough, you'll see pop up the sold price for the items. Don't get confused and think that um, you should expect to pay, um, even though some dealers try to do this, and this is the best way to spot a bad dealer, if they're trying to charge you um, f a CGC, like a graded book price for um, a raw book, that's, that's not good. That's, you know, that, they shouldn't be charging that. Um, that's just a little quick tip for you uh, to, to look for, to, to use to search for pricing. Um, but remember that to buy the dip and never buy at the peak of, of the comic value because you know, comic values will go up and down and you want to wait for one of the downs and one of the downs means when everybody's moved on to the next hot book and it's, it's in a dip and you know, the, the value has, has maybe has softened a lot because nobody's expecting the price of the book to spike again. The true flippers and dealers have already made their money off of that book and a lot of collectors got stuck with it because they bought it at the peak of the value, which is when everybody was freaking out about it, maybe opening weekend for a big movie. Um, a recent book that comes to mind that that happened with was uh, at the summer with Amazing Spider-Man 361, the first appearance of Carnage. Um, a lot of people bought into that book uh, too, w way too late. And... A lot of people overspent a lot of money on that book, and then when they turned around to try to sell the book after it had, you know, after the movie had come out, they saw prices dropping like a stone on that book. And yeah, it was pretty painful, I think, for a lot of new collectors and a lot of people that thought they could flip or deal, and they found out the hard way that they're not a flipper and they're not a dealer, they're a collector that's okay to be that, you know, to, to just be that. Um, because, you know, if, if you're well-versed in the hobby, um, you, you know when to buy and when not to buy. And when everybody's talking about a book, that's the worst possible time to buy the book because you're always going to end up paying the premium price. And that book may not, like now, uh, at the recording of this video, months and months after uh, Venom, or Venom 2 came out, uh, the book of, uh, or the uh, price of Amazing Spider-Man number 361 has dropped quite a bit. Uh, I think by as much as 50 or 60 percent of what it was at its peak, probably more. Um, now is a decent time to buy that book, but, um, but yeah, when the movie came out, it wasn't the right time. So that's, that's just a practical example for what it means to buy the dip. Um, don't pay peak FOMO pricing for any book, no matter what. There will always be another copy to come along. Um, you'll always be able to find another deal. Don't pay more than your gut instinct is telling you or your research is telling you. That's just, it's not going to turn out well for you. You're going to be the one stuck with a book that you overpaid for and nobody ever wants to, like you'll just, you know, you'll spend decades trying to get, you know, see value added to that book. So that's um, tips for that. Um, those are my four steps for adding value to your comic collection. Again, um, I don't focus just on monetary value. Um, I also, fo you know, I focus on head knowledge and heart knowledge, head values and uh, heart values when it comes to books, um, and and you can too. 
that's what a great diverse comic collection looks like is when you have books in there um, like this Uncanny X-Men number 277 books that are worth very little monetarily but heart wise they're worth a lot because of the nostalgia and warm and fuzzies that it brings you um, and then there's other books that are books that are you know that that you recent ones that you've come to appreciate and enjoy and they are but but you also know that they're going to continue to appreciate and value so that's uh those are my four steps for how to add value to your comic collection hey so thanks again for tuning in uh, I hope this video was was helpful, especially if you're a brand new collector who is just getting into the hobby. Make sure to watch parts one and two of this video series, Comic Collecting for Beginners. Part four is going to be going live next uh, next week. Um, you know, in the meantime, make sure and check out some of the other videos on the channel. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. If you would please hit like for the video, make sure to also comment. Let me know what you thought of these tips and these steps. If you have any questions, make sure to drop those in the comments as well. I uh, will always drop, uh, a, drop a response. If you take the time to leave a comment, I'll make sure to take the time to respond. Um, make sure, and if you haven't already, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can know when other videos are going live and when new videos are dropping and you get to see stuff over on the community tab as well. Got a great community going on here over at the channel and thank you so much for taking a few minutes to hang out with us and to get some tips for how to add value to your comic collection. I'm Carl's Collects Comics and thanks again for watching and tuning in. I'll see you next week.